Uh, two of this best of three series here on Speed Gaming, this uh, Super Metro Randomizer tournament. We have Audra who took the 1 0 lead over Bressingham. And uh, I'm DJ Webb back with you. And with me is Kip. How's it going? Hey, DJ. It's going well. Excited to watch uh, game two here. And uh, this is a great matchup. Eager to see if it's going to get pushed to a game three or if it's going to end here. Yeah, a uh, fascinating game one with a lot of a uh, lot of interesting things. You know, we had a, a little bit of a power bomb hunt at the beginning. Uh, it didn't end up, you know, too bad as far as where uh, where the seed kind of let them go. And then, you know, <laughs> only finding one of the three is crazy. But you know, lots of other things happened in that seed, and we saw some some very nice tech pull off by both runners. Yeah, pretty bad, pretty bad. I feel like uh, in, in a lot of seeds, if you tell people, you know, I collected a third of the power bombs that were there, they're like, oh, you know, you probably had, you know, three, four, five of them. And you're like, nah, one out of three, just just one out of three. But uh, this seed, we'll see what uh, what it brings to the table and how our runners can uh, handle it. Yeah, you got any predictions for this one? Um, you know... Last time I was in a position like this and runners had a tricky first seed, I said the second seed would be worse, and I think I was right. So this time I'm going the other way. I'm going to say, you know, no uh, no, uh, no minor hunts, no crazy low ammo counts. Just, you know, a rando race where, you know, whoever whoever throws the, the hardest punch will win. Good prediction. Let's uh, find out what happens. Yeah, this is a really fun matchup. Uh, I think you were tell telling us a little bit about the history. Um, I, I can't remember. When did when did they play against each other? So last summer's tournament, they played a game in week six, which was won by Audra. That race was also insane for very different reasons than the previous one. And then they also met in round one, where Brest took game one, and then Audra took two and three to win the series. But, you know... Very good competitors, and all those games were close, as far as I remember. Yeah, Audra, clearly one of the most experienced runners and most successful runners in past tournaments. Uh, Bress, having had a great showing, particularly lately, uh, definitely... I mean, he's he's been playing for quite some time, but as far as on the rando scene and the tournaments... Um, uh, definitely making some noise here lately and uh, taking taking some pretty big wins. So uh, great to see both of these competitors this deep. And uh, yeah, I, I think uh, no matter who advances here, they're they're going to potentially uh, vie to try to make some noise in this thing. No, yep. so already somewhat better start. You know, we got an E tank here. We also got power bombs. So you know, more choices available early to our runners. And uh, yeah, pretty standard start. Both our runners. Doing fine. Breast has the moonfall advantage, so uh, most of the time difference is due to that. But we'll see what the seed has for us. And we could uh, we could diverge relatively quickly here, or we could we could stay close like we did last race. Very nice to find a secondary power bomb here. Um, you know, you don't depending on what this portal is here and whether they want to keep going. Uh, if they decide to turn around and head up, you don't have to check Gauntlet. Ooh, that's a nice portal to find right there. Uh, but anyway, I was going to say, if you if you find that secondary power bomb, you can go ahead and clear Gauntlet early in the game. It's not something I think is a play that's great all the time, but there are definitely situations where the major pays off, even if it's an E-Tank, but also you get a lot more miners off the bat, which can be very helpful. So it's nice to have that option if you want to take it. And yeah, yeah pointing out, uh, we've already found more power bombs than we did last seed. <laughs> In, uh, in three minutes. So we're happy about that. And we're happy to, uh, you know, we took Meme Round, we ended up in Green Brin. There's there's no difference from, you know, what we would normally do in a, in a vanilla map seed. We Just, found it uh, in three minutes and probably half of those three minutes were spent in dead time. <laughs> yeah. This, uh, so far it's looking like, uh, you know, a very different atmosphere. We'll see, you know, what curveballs it throws their way, how the runners handle it, and, uh, you know, the other thing about, you know, the weird and, you know, craziness of the ammo of the last seed did, you know, fortunately allow the runners to have, you know, the missiles and supers they needed pretty quickly. So, we'll see how the other ammo shapes up so far, as it's, you know, pretty normal so far.
And we already have a, a missile skip there under the bridge. Um, there are people who, you know, they see missiles, they get missiles, especially this early. But, uh, you know, every item has a time cost to collecting it. And, you know, some people, you know, have different feelings about some items versus others. And that skip is going to positionally put Audra in the lead. But, you know, who knows how valuable that exact one missile is, you know. While I, while I do agree with you, I will say this. I haven't met too many people across the Super Metroid randomizer community who get really excited about finding a missile pack. <laughs> so I wouldn't call it one of the more popular ones. Uh, although there have been some seeds where you're actually happy to run in, run into like an extra pack early, like if you if you think you might get a chance to fight Pantoon or something. But anyway, yeah. Uh, there are other items that you will not see people skip, but missiles is one of the more skippable ones that people typically will choose to skip uh, early. Yeah, and we're getting we're getting e-takes so far. Um, oh, the morph ball! That's what we found so far at our major locations. We'll see if uh, this pink burn area has anything else for them. But uh, you know, otherwise, this is kind of what you expect coming into Green Burn Star. Maybe you get one non-tank item that you know helps you, or you know, in the crazier seats you get you know high jump and speed in a suit, but probably going to be alright with whatever comes of this traversal. Roger, as well as being uh, one of the few people that doesn't use Moonwalk in the scene, uh, doesn't do like any setup for this uh, <laughs> This wave gate trick, as you saw, and got it first try. Breast with the, you know, with the moonwalk, it allows for you know some more normalized setups and getting into position much easier. So lots of subtle differences that you know any individual runner can have. Yeah, it's kind of ironic. You know, I guess there's no real reason to spend a ton of time talking about this, but you know. Randomizer had just kind of started getting a little bit popular when Moonfall was discovered. And so it's kind of funny that no, literally like hardly anybody, I, I never knew anybody that used Moonwalk at all before Moonwalk or before Moonfall was discovered. But technically, even if Moonfall didn't exist, there are a lot of places in Rando where having Moonwalk at all is actually very beneficial. So kind of neat how that works out. Yeah, and we got a wave beam there, a charge beam, the only non-tank that we found. But, you know, our energy's good, our ammo's pretty good uh, for the, the start of a seed, and we'll uh, we'll see where else we go, which, you know, could possibly entail running all the way back through here, because we just saw a West Meridia portal that we're not going to do anything with right now. So, depending on where New Bridge takes us, we could be, uh, could be running back. <laughs> well, a lot of elevators so far. A lot of elevators is right. We uh we came in at the the top of this area, and then at the bottom we found the top of uh the other part of Burnstar here at the red elevator. So these are two places early game that you like finding. You know the uh the green burn has lots of you know densely packed majors and minors, and then red tower has plenty of portals for you to uh, explore at your leisure as we, we find our way back to Criteria. What's Terminator got for us? Ah, that's two seeds in a row with a relatively early bombs pickup. Yeah, very crucial last seed, especially with, you know, the minimal amount of power bombs. Uh, this seed, we'll see just how impactful they are, but the earlier you find them, the, the happier you are about them. There's the uh, the forgotten highway side of wreck ship. Uh, now the runner choosing to do that at this time. Uh, it's not the most fun thing to go right to left with no movement, and uh, you know, then potentially what are you doing once you're at the left side? So, returning to Red Brent Star here, Bress needs to pick up these bombs first, and then I'm assuming probably heads back the same way. But you do have other options like going to you know BT Gauntlet, the right side, stuff like that.
This is a. Uh... This is throwing a lot of things at our way that we don't necessarily want to do right now. Um, we've seen now lower Norfare here at the middle of Red Tower. We've seen some Meridia stuff. We saw a water section in Rex ship. Um, and we're not a. Uh, we're not really interested in those places right now. True. The good news, in some capacity, though, is that so far two of the three um, boss locations that only have two portals. Uh, are technically pretty easily connected to Red, you know, Red Brin Star in totality. So in particular, if a uh, East Meridia portal shows up in the next three down here, then technically Red Brin Star will be a hub for like literally every place you would want to go eventually. So uh, that yeah. that actually removes a little bit of the complexity potentially. Yeah, it won't be how do I get to a place, it'll be where do I want to go at you know any given time. And we saw we saw high jump there at Spazer. That's a, a very nice find. Once again, that was an early item last seat as well. And uh we see Bressingham deciding to do this early X-ray play. Very nicely executed debus. And uh once again, we're back in uh back in Meridia. The X-ray is vanilla. And uh, it looks like, um, I'm not sure what this could be that could stop us from going into Norfair. And uh, it was Norfair itself, so it didn't really stop us. We're just on a different side. And ironically, the same thing happened. Technically, uh, Rex Ship and East Meridia are not connected to Red Brinstar, but they're like one easy portal away. Um, that's really funny. Yeah, and we're seeing a very, very early dip here into the East Meridia area. I think we're checking left sandpit? Yeah, I gotta admit to you, I don't fully understand this play. This is definitely an out of logic play. Um, yeah, maybe just sort of an informational thing, or maybe... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, obviously, like the lowest hanging fruit is that if you spike exactly very here you're in like the best situation ever but like you know a health refill wouldn't be terrible there is a minor here um it's definitely not something you would expect in a, a lot of scenarios but you no know, here we are we're gonna see what uh what we have here it's just a vanilla reserve we just saw vanilla x-ray as well but it does look like they want that Yeah, I gotta admit, like, you know, I'm very hesitant to sort of critique certain plays. I, and, I, you know, Audra has a, uh, a background where I would uh, assume that they're in a position to, like, understand and, and you know, like, make a call that's, that's right for them. I really don't quite understand this one, other than, I guess, attempting to maybe spike something, but... Especially given how game one of the matchup went. Yeah, and the other I wouldn't thing have is, a lot of confidence uh, in just playing straightforward, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is also a, a very dangerous area. We saw with that fall down into the enemy spit. Uh took two hundred damage. I or not two hundred, maybe one hundred damage, but like a lot because you don't have a suit and you're in Meridia. Um, so yeah. Maybe some farming here. That enemy's uh, playing games. Ooh, that's an ouch. So, yeah. We're going to see that uh, Brussingham's going to take a positional advantage here. Um, Pretty big swing right there. Yeah. Uh, as well as, you know, the positional advantage, Brussingham's health is, you know, pretty much full. Audra's got 173. So, we're going to see Bress more than likely go straight to Ice Beam. Uh, not necessarily the greatest option on the other side of the screen. One extra super, though, is like, you know, that's kind of the biggest boom, and uh, considering we're in Upper Norfair and there's several, you know, pretty convenient miners here, that's unlikely to be the biggest impact, but yeah, big, uh, Big time difference of, you know, what was done in East Meridia between our two runners. It's a nice high jump minor distribution there. That's pretty much, 
I would say in the vast majority of cases, that would be exactly what you would want to see. One super one power bomb. Yeah, and uh, with this energy tank here, Bress is once again going to be in the better position. Having done the ice hell run first, we'll have you know high energy and can just make his way into the uh, the right side of uh, you know Bow Mountain and Upper North here. Uh, Audra will have uh, well the ability to crystal flash in theory. Um, you need more power bombs. I think those enemies down below the ice hallway drop power bombs with uh, pretty good odds, but. Yeah, Crystal Flash will be the way that they will potentially refill their health. And that uh, that costs resources that you're going to have to refill eventually. Um, but I guess we don't, we maybe don't necessarily have to go through a, a Cathedral Hell Run. There's other options. The portals work out in ways that I can't place right now, but uh, regardless, the health will be much better for Bressingham. So yeah, Bress is leaving here. Yeah, um, thinking about it right now, I mean, really the only options that I can see that you currently have are... Um, you could make the hell run. It could be possible, though, that Bress is instead just taking the elevator to get back to Tube because tube is single chamber so it like cuts off on the amount of energy you would lose on the initial hell run you know what i mean yeah um, and there's and, even a farm right here <laughs> yeah plus five energy tanks might actually I don't, I don't remember off the top of my head but it might be enough to do um straight to wave and out even if you don't get an e-tank uh it might be a little close but anyway so i think yeah it looks like that's what he's doing i, I think this is a perfectly fine play yeah. I also forgot there was another easy source of power bombs there in the, the frog speedway, but Audra's choosing to just farm up in uh in business center and potentially just gonna, you know, go through here the, the front way, as it were. So we're gonna get to a similar place in a little bit dissimilar ways and uh we'll see, you know, what goes on from there. And uh yeah. I think even if I was just gonna, you, know, you know, farm and kind of do this the normal way, I think I still would have probably gotten some power bombs there in Frog Speedway. But yeah, with high jump, this is a, a pretty comfy hull run, and Audra makes it no issue just on a uh, pretty low health. And uh, Breast did very minimal farming there when he uh, got into the speed booster layer. Uh, not gonna be the case over there on the right side. And this is a splice beam. Yes, it is. I think we're gonna see a pause here. Yeah, that was uh it was pretty close, but uh, it's a pretty nice reward here. Ice beam. We've already got the high jump boots, so those are some good suitless items. But uh, yeah, both of our runners are gonna be farming a good bit here. Uh, we'll see um, if some power bombs drop and anyone elects to crystal flash, but probably you still wanna get your health up anyway in that scenario. I say that Brett already has two power bombs here. I'll just been farming longer and has none. We got people in chat trying to secure the Pantene Pro V uh, <laughs> uh, sponsorship for, for this tournament over here. Bress and Audra. <laughs> yes. Uh, lots of hair on uh, both of their heads, as we're seeing with the, the face cams, a nice feature of the. SGL online tournament and uh, yeah, look at it. Russ got five power bomb drops in a shorter amount of time of farming compared to Audra, who got one. That's uh, yeah, that's pretty crazy. The way it works sometimes, and uh, yeah, both of our owners turning Ice Beam off with uh, you know, expediency after picking it up. Uh, it's a great beam until you need to farm, and then you know. You're shooting everything in additional time. And uh, until such a time as that uh, that reserve is able to be filled, that uh, it's not going to be, you know, any advantage gained from the additional item Audric got out of East Meridia compared to Bressingham. And there's a nice refill at the reserve location. That was a nice bounce ball strat by Breast there. I've never tried that strat in there before. That's a scary room, by the way. 
that it is. And you you saw just how quickly the you know the first hundred energy drained away with the the lava dip. You know, taking both lava and heat damage simultaneously. It uh stacks very quickly. And yeah, we saw a save here from Audra. Gonna come up here and do this check as well. And yeah, Brett's going straight to wave. And uh, yeah, last bubble mountain check. Uh, we got ice beams, so you're never gonna be upset about that. But uh, we'll see how relevant uh, these checks are in the long run of this seed. I'm gonna go out on a limb, and I'm gonna call various seed right here. Just let's get crazy. <laughs> I think in Bress's situation, that would feel kind of bad just because, uh, you know, you came in right next to it and you potentially, like you said, might have been able to make it out regardless of the item. Um, but yeah, just an E-Tank. So, I think you're probably... Are you happy that you got the not any tank first or would you rather have gotten it last? I'm really not sure. Probably first is good because wherever you go from here, your health is full. Yeah, I think in this particular situation, I don't think it would have mattered much because my assumption is that Bress is probably going to go down and check the croc portal which you would be passing by the um the refill you know what I'm saying yeah um so I guess it doesn't really matter but you know finding two e-tanks in upper north air in this context I don't really think is uh, necessarily a bad thing because it is extremely likely that your opponent is doing the same thing the way this map has flowed so far you know what I mean yeah. Um, and so it's not like you're sitting around thinking that you didn't get a huge payoff. Although I will say ice is very nice and could end up being like, you know, very logically significant at some point. But anyway, um, plus E tanks early. Like I really never mind having a whole bunch of them if I don't have a suit yet. Um, because even if you, you know, find Varia, but you end up having to do some lower Norfair stuff without, um, excuse me, without gravity or maybe like a safety item, uh, sometimes those those extra E-tanks really help out a lot. Yeah, and you, you spoke of Lower Norfair and it appeared here. Uh, the, what is normally the front door was the back door there at the, the Chronic Boost door. And uh, yeah, Breast safe scum that, and uh, yeah, very likely the next stop is the Croc door. As, uh, not sure what the plan here is. Does Audra want um, a farm? No, Audra could potentially be leaving. I think they should know where this door goes, right? Especially since that's where uh, that's where Press came in. We'll see based on the reaction if they uh, realize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They either forgotten or mistracked. <laughs> Bit of a time loss there, and uh, we're looking at Croc Door and we're getting wrecked ship. So, yeah, kind, kind of, of all of these boss areas the you know, Upper Norfair and uh, Red Tower, the keys to like all of it just haven't seen Craig yet. Yeah, um, here's kind of a section where you'd probably prefer to take the high jump boots off. Uh, it's a little awkward trying to jump across with them on. Uh, it can be done, but it's just it just feels a little bit different. Um, I was going to say earlier, uh, I've kind of been on record uh, saying that I guess other than Spazer, but in Dash, you know, there was some significance for Spazer being useful, but Wave is like potentially like the most, the least useful item in terms of its actual like application. Um, but uh, when you do have it, sometimes it helps, and it actually helped in multiple spots for Bress here. Made things a little bit quicker getting through those gates and whatnot. Yeah, it's always nice when you're coming up to a gate, you might have to glitch, and you just, you know, shoot the purple beam, and it, you know, makes things a lot easier. Especially, you know, looking at that croc door in a, a no various situation. Uh, the timer's ticking, and, uh, you know, what can, you know, a runner who can hit 100 gate glitches out of 110 might, you know, struggle a little bit because, you know, your health's ticking down. Never feels that great. This um, is get a look. this is part of the reason I would have probably done a refill um, prior to going into the croc portal, regardless, because you know. And again, the super the super situation also doesn't really help. But had he found a super there at Spooky, and he had um, full energy. Or like one tank or less than one tank down from the hell run from the energy 
then this would have been a technically more manageable situation potentially. Uh, but it, you know, we'll just have to wait and see which boss it is. It is Ridley. That it is, and uh, Chad was pointing out that that save was maybe a little unnecessary. Um, I guess like Dragon, you could kill there, and maybe you'd want that save there just in case you know you fail and want to go back. But uh, both of them have that uh, you know Bubble Mountain save that's definitely closer to where they want to be. And as you see, Audra didn't check that miner. And I'm going to guess is also not going to save, but oh, Bress wants to stay here to do the other portal. Or no, it's not the other portal. You can't get a portal. Yeah. So this has been, uh, you know, looking at basically where the left side of this map has taken us, basically. We've kind of seen all of it, and, uh, you know, we've gotten energy, high jump, and ice beam out of that. So, you know. Potentially the right side maybe had uh, the keys to victory, but it's also possible that, you know, we could be taking our suitless items to where they may lead us. But yeah, based on where Bress is going, I'm assuming... I mean, he could either do right side criteria or he could, uh, you know, back in the red Brent star and end up in uh, in West Meridia where we uh, you could have some suitless action here. Unless I've tracked incorrectly... There's eight total portals left, but like only five of them are actually like entry entry portals. You know what I mean? Um, which means that of the five left, three of them lead to a dead end. We still have Croc, we still have Crane, and we still have Torian, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that's correct. And the things we haven't looked at, like I said, two on the right side of Criteria, the other two are in West Meridia. Oh, and there's one in East Meridia as well. So yeah, this is a... The back side of this map is a pretty... Uh, pretty one way ish i want to say as uh you saw audrey used uh, the roll and save feature to go to a previous save at uh at business center and decided that ice beam was good and they wanted it so skipped out on that and went to a different save so uh yeah we're back in criteria for Bressingham, and uh i think yeah audra potentially looking at either side of meridia here um that ice beam allows for the uh batoon check as well as the mama turtle check to be in logic Hopefully, uh, Bresingham's internet decides to be kind to both uh, him and uh, you know us, the viewers, and we'll we'll see what he is up to next. But yeah, for now, Audra again. I think pretty likely to go into East Meridia here. Um, nope. Is, or, is this the way? It is. So yeah. I gotta say, this seed, the flow of this seed has been pretty strange, actually. Um, I have not seen too many that it's, it's hard it's kind of hard to explain but I haven't seen too many seeds flow quite like this one is relative to how the, the players are choosing to, to run it um, yeah kind of kind of a unique race here yeah and it looks like Bomb Teresa was holding plasma that's where uh, Bressingham has ended up so that's a it's a nice little beam upgrade if we can uh, if we can find plasma we'll be really happy um our ammo isn't, you know, so high that charge beam is kind of a slap in the face right now. And uh, Audra doing the snail climb that they uh, showed off last race, but uh, without the spring ball, it's going to be quite a bit slower. You got to uh, face certain directions for the snail to move and then face the other direction so the snail doesn't move and you don't take damage and fall through it. Yeah, that should be the last jump and we're up. So... Uh, yeah, our runners have diverged pretty significantly now, I'm going to say. Um, there's some good somewhere, and uh, decently likely to find it pretty soon here with uh, the coverage that we're getting. And potentially we'll find two good things, you know, like, this can't be a suit here at Gauntlet that Bress is checking, but Speed Booster could hold the keys to something out there, and, you know, this could be either suit, which could give us, you know, some good things on Audra's side. Obviously, gravity will be what you prefer because uh, not really in a position to do much else here in East Meridia if we don't get the gravity. And it's charged, which is still impactful, like I was saying. Significantly more impactful because of the uh, plasma pickup to go along with the X-ray. X-ray, 
Uh, just to, to keep it 100% here, like having microwave beam in the randomizer context is extremely, extremely useful and powerful and applicable to a lot of different areas. So uh, that's a really nice find. Yeah, the um, there are some situations that can come up somewhat often. Like, say you've got uh, you've got everything but Varia. You go down to Lower Norfair and you find Dragon down there. Um, that boss can suck up resources that you need regarding you know either your energy or your crystal exactly. flashing. If you've got microwave, it takes charge shots, which are infinite. And they find the second reserve in the seed. Both of them so far in East Viridia. Listen, I think reserves have more value than maybe you know. The average viewer might would assume but uh i'm gonna go out on a limb and say i don't think audra was pleased to find double reserve in the suitless place so far in this suit yeah if uh if press never does any of this suitless that's gonna be a ton of time saved as uh like you said we were always very likely to find quite a bit of a dead ending on the, the back half of our map traversal we found Turian there at the crab portal and criteria and uh Press probably wants to turn off those high jump boots here. I don't think he has yet. Yeah, there we go. And then we can get either a CWJ or a horizontal bomb jump going on across this moat. First Not try. even gonna use the bombs. Wow. There's old Croc. Yeah, yeah. And look, immediate value from that charge beam right here in plasma. Absolutely. Um. Did the first shot into the ceiling instead of straight through Croc, and also there's some weird stuff with the RNG. So uh, not a one shot, a two shot, but yeah, Croc's gonna back it up, back it up all the way into the acid. And, I, I uh, think we're gonna find something good here, DJ, and I think Bress is gonna take command of this this race. Um, yeah, things are things are trending in that direction now. It's still possible that you know something good is not at grapple, but I don't know. It just kind of feels like it's trending in that direction. Yeah, I mean, I think our only other realistic out is Mama Turtle. If it's not Grapple, like, what else what else can we really do, right? Like, it's one of those places. Is Audra is more than likely? Well, no, still not going to clean up. I was thinking maybe clean up X-Ray here. Yeah. Um, It's in logic with the items they have, you know. Both Ice Beam and Bomb separately are enough, and you have the, the energy for sure. You know? Gonna get that vanilla x-ray. Didn't look good at the time, to be honest. X-ray is usually not something you want to find at x-ray, you know what I mean? But um, it's gonna be helpful for breasts. That it is. And we're seeing, uh, in theory, this is how the game logically wants you to do this. You know, none of those deboosts that you see a lot of our runners do that are, you know, pretty tricky and uh, are like an entire room setup of stuff. Uh, what the game wants you to be able to do is, you know, not necessarily have to do any of that and have the energy to tank a bunch of spike hits and do things like IBJ or freeze some enemies and use them for platforming. Hey, DJ, what's it going to be here at Grapple? Make your call quick. Speed. Oh. I was wrong. The payoff or the payout, however you want to put it. Yeah, this was, uh, I mean, you were right, like very likely to have something good and uh funnily enough like um this has been available the whole seed um people just you know go left over right more often than not um and especially you know we didn't go left we followed meme route which was you know green burn and makes 100 percent sense but uh yeah very has been here Pressingham has it and uh more than likely very commanding the uh I'm not sure I see a way back into this that isn't, you know, spiking gravity at Mama Turtle and just finishing without Varia for Audra. Um, and even that, who knows if it's enough. Um, Press has some good map knowledge. Like, eventually, Audra does have to find Torian, right? Like, it's over here. Nothing is ever impossible, but just looking at the scope of what all... It's not even just spiking like a major item. It's also like the time Audra's going to have to spend picking up a bunch of miners that at this point, like, Bress is probably very unlikely to even gather hardly any more at all, if any. Um, yeah, this is, again, nothing's ever impossible, but... And if you just look at, like, the plays Audra's currently making, it appears as though they believe that they need to make a play. You know what I mean? Um... Yeah, Bress is in uh, pretty big control here. 
Now he he might not feel that way, but he is. Yeah, I mean, I think probably if you're in his position, you feel like you know every play you've made so far has been reasonable. This was a crock that uh, kind of didn't really present itself to you early, despite being available early. And you know you spike very there, so that's good, right? We'll just have to see what else comes from this. Is yeah, like we said earlier, with uh, the very bountiful uh, boss areas that uh, exist here at Red Brinstar, we can uh, we can go to Lower North or next. Remind me again, what was the crab portal? In Criteria? Yes. Torian. So the only outstanding um, solo portal that we have is Craig's Lair, and so it is either one of the two in uh, West Meridia, or it is the dead end, okay. and we only and we have an, an intra uh, area portal in uh, West Meridia. Meridia, which we don't see that too frequently. Um, I'll be yeah, interested to see if it happens. Pretty uncommon, and it looks like uh, the the way that you traverse this rune, uh, you pretty much get like one shot to uh, you know freeze this enemy in a way that's fast enough. So I'll just try something we saw Breast do last year, which was an underwater wall jump. Oh, and, I uh, thought Audra was waiting on that crab. That other crab was on its way. And then yeah, and then killed it. Unfortunately, yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I think that was an accident or maybe frustration. I'm not sure what happened there. Ooh, and Bress is down here and uh, not doing a screw attack. People, people really don't like screw attack. I like screw attack just fine, actually. But uh, <laughs> you know, my, my plays are usually not the ones people consider to be the most popular, anyway. You know, it's also not popular to win as much as you have. So maybe there's some lessons to be learned. But, no, um, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> that, okay. that, explain, that explains a lot, uh, DJ. Yeah. So yeah, we're not doing the x-ray check. Uh, you know, very possible and perfectly reasonable gravity location, potentially. And uh, we're going forward to, you know, potentially, like, you know, we can get out of Dragon. Um, just it's not necessarily the greatest thing ever. And yeah, much better handling of the crab there this time. You get... Uh, Jump off of the freeze, and yeah, we're up to... We'll be in ever soon, and then... Probably looking at Mama Turtle. Breast with the smirk on that E-Tank. The flip side is, is like, I, you know, for, on the one hand, though... You, you know, you, you don't want to play, like, hyper, hyper aggressive all the time, but you also don't want to play with, like, too much caution. And even though he is not guaranteed at the moment to be able to, like do suitless east meridia kill whatever boss is there and get out like with his current loadout it's very possible he runs into some items that let's say gravity was at screw it's still possible for him to either collect some things or you know find something along the way that will like let him do the whole thing without issue so um yeah i don't think it's a bad play to skip screw but i also don't think it would have been bad to check it yeah we shall see. And like I said, we're coming up on this uh, Mama Turtle. If this isn't gravity, it's pretty much just a pure lead for Bressingham. Even if it is, it's probably still a pure lead, and it's just a tank. So, uh, yeah, the variable was the key to uh, what this C wanted, seed wanted. Um, I'm the calling it now. No Gravity's, behind. Gravity's behind Ridley. They're, they're supposed to return back to the wrecked ship, and that's where it's going to be. <laughs> I thought you were about to call... Uh, uh, a fan tune down here but honestly even if what you were saying is true and fan tune is down here it's going to lead them back there anyway so uh yeah we'll have to see and it's pretty likely oh my god there's another really silly possibility which is uh what audra's about to do if this is crade's layer crade's layer could also have well hold on it would have to be vanilla crade right to give us gravity um... at least directly yeah, no, you're right. It would be. But I've I've actually lost an area seed that way. <laughs> That'd be crazy, dude. Uh, that looks like Crates Lair, though. It yeah, is. Oh goodness. Oh boy. Yeah. The most likely outcome of oh. West Meridia holding Crates Lair. Hold on. I take fruition. I take all that back, DJ. He, they he he can already. Or excuse me. This loadout. No matter what you're doing, you can already get out of crab hole. Like For sure. you, you logically already have it because it's. I think it's just boots and ice, isn't it? Uh, to my knowledge, yes. At least for the logic, and we do get the dragon here in Lauren Warfare. 
Uh, Looks like he knew because he damaged down a lot in that acid, so he's already in a in a crystal flash position. Uh, the resolution of the restream doesn't tell me. Yeah, I thought that was 81, but I also thought it might have been 01. By the way, uh, that's an even better reason to have checked screw because if you happen to run into Dre here, then you have an additional chance at picking up Spring Ball or Grapple. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the odds of this being Vanilla Crate are 50 50, and none of it impacts. Oh, it's Fantoon. Which could maybe still have somebody this. Uh, it's still more than likely that Bressingham's position is extremely commanding, but like, I don't know. Some funky stuff has happened in the past few minutes. Um, unfortunately, most of it's been time. Well done. On other side, and yeah, there's a dead Dragon. We've got the flash suits. Um, hope we won't burn it. We're in good shape here on Bressingham's side. He does want to look at this item. You could definitely. You could convince me not to. Like, only speed here is really, really helping you. I guess Vanilla Spaceship would be terrible, but... With full beam, like... There was uh, not a ton of value in that major. Yeah, yeah good we job. Out. Yeah, I guess, yeah. For potential further suit list, there were some other good items there, like Spring Ball. Um, but yeah, we just killed two bosses. Um, we just got the confirmation that Crate is in East Meridia, so... No gravity in Crate's closet, um, that's for certain. Um, that knowledge um, does tell you that, you know, if you get speed, that's your uh, potentially your way out of pressure stream if you end up listening to East Meridia. Um, which is looking pretty likely here, like... Well, actually, hold on. Probably Breast finishes this suitless, I want to say. Like, it feels like that's the direction it's going. We'll see how things work out for Audra. Um, the screw attack skip feels even more likely on their end, given what has transpired thus far. Hold on, help me uh, out, because apparently I don't understand what's going on. So, we know that Craig's at East Meridia, yes? Yes. I guess Breast doesn't know that. But anyway, Breast has to either find Gravity or Speed Booster or Spring Ball to get out, right? There's no other, there aren't any other options, right? Right. So, yeah. What was it? What was it? Fireflies? Just an E tank. Okay. What if this is some like speed at screw attack, gravity at waterway? See, that'd be fun. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, both that and, uh, potentially, um, a waterway could spell some somewhat disastrous outcomes for breasts. Um, I guess we've got the, uh, well, hold on. Underwater wardrobe doesn't help you with Precious. That's just faster traversal through the, the main area of East Meridia itself. Also, it's available? Yeah, but it's it's up at the top of Redfish, so getting there is also kind of slow if you're suitless. But, yeah, um, who knows what could happen from here. Um, Audra kind of has to do the things that Bressingham has just done and is, you know, significantly later to them. But, uh, Chris does also have to, you know, eventually, like, go to that Crates layer and kill that Fantoon. And, uh, to our knowledge, it's pretty likely that that hides gravity. Um, kind of the only other option is whatever screw attack holds for us. So, uh, yeah. We, uh, there's a chance that, you know, things work out really well for Breast and we're just kind of done. And like you said, Ridley could just have gravity, you know, and it just wanted you to go back to wreck ship. So... Who knows what the rest of the seed has in store for us. Here's another save that you don't see super frequently. Yeah, the, the below the tube save. Um, Chat's wonder if he's going back for GT. Where's the front? Um, you know what? Speaking of rare saves, I pulled off a save that was legitimately viable and I think the correct decision for the first time that I've, I've ever used it in an area seed. I, I made a save at uh, Spore Spawn. <laughs> no, I'm serious. The situation actually called for it. Um, but anyway, it was neat. Yeah, and Audra um, saved at the ship before this BT check. I think they don't want to do the fight. Um, I think you 
Oh, nope, I was wrong again. We're not checking either Ronald or BT, which as we know, are, you want both of those. Um, instead, we're going to the left side here, which uh, leads to wreck ship. Um, oh, so that was a resource refill because there's a Ridley here. That's what this was. I see what's going on. But yeah, Andra, not doing what I uh, what I thought was gonna happen. Um, this is the thing that they uh, they do sometimes, where like you make certain decisions in a seed, and it puts you in a position where you can surmise that more than likely you're not in a great position. So the plays you make are the ones that give you like some chance of winning. So like you know, it was kind of like the decision point was like this versus the criteria checks both items and portal wise on the right side and like you know as we know like Bressingham's just now getting to that crate there with the fan tune so Aldra was there first and you know this wreck ship play could have been what the seat wanted from them and if you know they could find that first potentially you flip flop the positioning but probably um like I've been saying for a little bit it's a little bit too far gone for these things to matter but uh We'll see what happens here. Listen, I want to I want to say something on behalf of the entire Super Metroid community. I don't know, maybe other people don't feel this way, but the beam combination with the worst hitbox in terms of how it in, in engages with the rest of the environment is Plasma Wave. I hate it. Every time I fight Fantoon with Plasma Wave, but I don't like can't do a charge shot. And I'm trying to like clear out flames. It is the worst. Interesting. We uh we fell in the water and still came back for this vanilla workship E tank. Dude, wave is the same as all the other beams. It just tra it just looks funny on the screen, but it's 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 collision is identical to everything else. Like I could I could literally do a wave fight with like the same as P shooter. Hmm. Imagine me having an un an uh, unpopular opinion about <laughs> plasma. <laughs> Never happened in the history of this scene. It's uh, it's your favorite item, right? Uh, just I'm just ahead of my time. That's all. <laughs> yeah, we are. Uh, we're gonna see if Bressingham can uh, you know, escape this uh, so-called uh, good boys room with uh, the speed that Audra showed. Uh, so far, taking it a little bit more conservatively. Um, he's already frozen this left crab twice. We're gonna see what's going on. All right, so yeah, that's a good start. Um, getting this one in the middle. Oh, that kill isn't good though. And though, uh, yeah, this is a like I said, it's not going the speediest for uh, for Bressingham over here. As uh, we've gotten one major here, we're gonna check this right super first. Yeah, I'm really interested in what's gonna occur over here on Audra's side. Uh, they have successfully made it to wreck ship with the wreck ship on, and uh, I'm real curious to see what, what we're gonna find here. More reserves. <laughs> that is yeah. like Audra's luck this uh, this race. That's unfortunate. Yeah, like kind of has chosen to done like harder stuff at like a lot of turns. Um, you know, lots of suitless stuff that's gone on in the seed. Um, None of which was required, and I think that's already guaranteed. Um, and like, you know, we've gotten three reserves out of a lot of that. You know, we even did some suitless traversal to get here into this wreck ship, which, you know, the front is accessible, just was much further away from their position. And yeah, we're about to see a, a no barrier Ridley fight. We've got 29 supers, so only need to supplement 600 damage if we don't miss. Yeah, this should. I think Audra is not going to have much difficulty with this. I don't want to jinx anything, but. Yeah, and uh, two of those three reserves are definitely full because we just took the ship refill. So lots and lots of health here for this fight. Um, started with the power bomb. I couldn't tell if it double hit. Um, if it did, only two missiles were needed as well as these 29 supers. And uh, we've got a good pogo, pogo minute going so far. And uh, if they've been counting well and did everything right, yeah. Got him. 
not a ton of health loss here on uh on this fight. Yeah, Bressingham following up on that Fantoon kill with the same play here. Just uh, you know, doesn't need to be nearly as a uh, you know. Bressingham uh, loving life, getting to cross ocean with high jump boots twice in one seed, and then follows up by supering a blue door. Very nice. <laughs> Those are the things that uh, that area seeds can do to you. Um, it was a grapple behind here, you know, more laughing in the face of all of the suitless plays that have been made thus far, quite frankly. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've got a, a vanilla gravity suit location and a wreckship reserve that we can't, you know, get, but we can look at. So, yeah, I was about as confident as I could ever be with Audra checking this top wreckship in this situation, but... It's one of the, you know, least desirable ones, like, you know, it's never, you know, the the checks with the, you know, lowest cost time-wise, and uh, you can't even get one of the two majors up here, unless, you know, the other one is speed. Which we have seen before. Yeah, there, uh, one of the things about this play, you know, like, looking at this item, it makes a lot of sense, you want to know if it's good, but, like, if it's something good and you're in a position where you can't get it, but like speed is like, you know, key under the doormat type of situation, uh, people like to leave that because it's like, I'll come back when I get speed. And, you know, if you can't come back when you get speed because speed's here, you're in, a, you're in a world of hurt. But, you know, another E tank. We don't see the top of wreck ship. First of all, we don't see it a ton in Rando, generally speaking. Uh, but in area. Yeah, definitely not something that happens very frequently. So this is, you know, this this seed has been quite the treat. We've seen a lot of interesting things here. Yeah, you asked me my thoughts on the seed at the beginning, and I was way off. We are, uh, we're in the middle of somewhat of a doozy, you know? Like, there was, the, there's somewhere in the seed, there's a path to victory that, you know, feels, like, pretty good. Um, I don't necessarily think either of our runners are on it, but, you know, it also involves some crazy plays, like, you know... Just going to the right at the beginning for Croc and doing both items and, you know, other silly things. But otherwise... Yeah. Haven't seen a ton of people positions. go right off the bat. I mean, it, honestly, I really don't think... Like, especially if you check the early portal and you're refilling at the ship with power bombs. You know, depending on your loadout, I understand some people avoid it because they don't want to, like, not not find something at Crab and then get get forced into a potential CWJ. But I actually don't think checking the right portals at the beginning is a bad play. It used to be something I would do uh, somewhat frequently. By the way, that was a uh, nice grapple item for Bress. Yeah, Bressingham has decided that uh, I think neither the E tank nor the Vanilla Gravity Sea location or something that he. Uh, Wants to look at right now, so uh, oh goodness gracious, the answer is it's screw attack. That's just it. <laughs> like, the answer literally has to be screw attack. That's there's nothing else. So, Bress still can't do this, right? Bress can't get out of East Meridia, right? My knowledge, no. Um, the grapple was great for, I mean, he's got you know two other suitless items that are in logic but yeah the boss location um unless there's something i don't know about um i mean i could think of a solution it's cross product levels of silly and i don't know that literally anyone not named cross product could do it so i'm not even gonna mention it but. shout out to cross my guy <laughs> You know, you know why I think I like Cross so much. Like we we've we've hung out together a few times at different events, and like, you know, I I don't want to speak for him, but I think we have a really fun time together. I think we get along so well because we're like polar opposites in how we play Super Metroid. <laughs> we have a nice like yin yang thing going. I definitely I think it was a it was it might have been a season three race. Or it might have been yeah I think it was a season three race. Um, he did one of his uh, patented you know elevator crystal flashes, and it like. Turned it into a blue suit and checked checked a waterway with no speed that gave him space jump. And it's like, if you do that, like, you feel great about life, right? So, like, you just kind of, like, power up from there on. But, uh, you, uh, yeah, I, I would agree with that sentiment. You two are very, very different players. And, yeah, and I mean versus, that in a good way, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But, yeah, it's also a versus, testament to how much how much range you can you can have to play this game, you know what I mean? 
for certain. So yeah, Bress is looking for answers in uh, you know, what we know to be the wrong places. I'm very interested in what Audra's doing right now, and I think the answer is Suitless Thor and Orpher. <laughs> Somewhat unfortunately, probably. Um, well, definitely unfortunately, because we know the answer is Screw Attack. Um, yeah, that's exactly what's over here. <sighs> Sometimes, and I said this at uh, about a seed that was played by your teammate Zost against Farflu in round one of this tournament. Sometimes, like, seeds aren't, like, actually, like, really bad, and, like, they require some running around, but the way that you play them, like, triples that running around, and I think we're seeing that here. Because so someone needs to get to screw attack at some point and find, you know, probably gravity. Um, and until then, I don't know what's going to happen on our screen. Hey, the next time I get, uh, Trash talked in the chat for being too thorough. Remember this day. Yeah, uh, and I was, I called it out right when it happened. Like, you know, Russ just kind of said no to screw attack. And uh, I was like, oh. I mean, my thoughts about that are mainly like you chose to come in the front. And even though from where you were, it was probably faster. Like you still made that decision. So why not like, you know, pay it off with the check that you do from the front more easily. Um. But, uh, you know, that's not the decision that Russingham made. And obviously, <laughs> Audra made the decision to, like, you know, say a lot of, say no to a lot of things that, uh, again, probably were more reasonable options, but doesn't want reasonable options to be the answer. So, uh, is doing slightly less reasonable things. Like, you know. <laughs> you know what the kind of scary thing about this is, though? And hold on, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I'm wrong about this. They cannot x-ray climb out. Like, it would have had to have been... Um, well, first of all, had it been Ridley, they wouldn't have needed to x-ray climb anyway. But if had it, they basically needed to be Dragon, right? I don't know much about x-ray climbing, but I, th I don't think you can do it if, if Crane's on the other side, right? Okay. So, so anyway... Um, so anyway, the point that I'm trying to make here is Bress doesn't I don't think Bress fully understands how much he's getting bailed out here as bad as this has gone for him in terms of like the one play that he skipped like is really really punishing him the worst it possibly could because there is no way no way Audra's getting over there to get the item. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do not do that suitless um, especially from this end and I don't think I've seen a zero suit on a Valen Lava Dive in Orando ever. <laughs> so yeah, we're uh... You saw me try to do it. Oh um... I did it in one of the qualifiers. <laughs> I saw you so I saw you do the reverse acid. I'm talking about like coming in the front of Lower North Fair and like just doing like RBO lava dive with no suits. Oh, I oh I got yeah, you. No, right. yeah, no, I think you're right about that. I don't think I've tried that either. <laughs> So, uh, yeah. Audra does know that this is not a, uh, a Ridley because they've already killed Ridley. They don't know if it's Dragon or Kraid. Um, Dragon's not great because of the, uh, the current health situation. Probably, actually, they're probably crystal flashing before they go in the room. Or no, you don't do that when it's not Ridley. I don't know. But, like, you're mostly fine here just because you have three. No, they actually have all four reserves now, don't they? This seed is like a bad relationship where you start off start off with good intentions and promise, and then somewhere along the way things go sideways, and then you keep doubling down on things. And then the next thing you know, you're in a situation where you're just like, "How on earth did I get here?" That's pretty much what this seed is. Um, answering a question in chat, Ace. So, Kip did the reverse uh, amphitheater acid dive. He had gravity though. It wasn't no suits. It was just Novaria. And uh, yeah, as we saw, the uh, the 400 energy refill from reserves. And yeah, um, Russ is choosing to go back to this boss area first, not the uh, the lower Norfair, um, which, like we said, is the answer, and we know that. So, uh, yep, we are in for a, we're in for a doozy here. It still feels like it's way too far out of reach for Audra to come back, but it's getting to the point where it's like kind of not. Okay. Like, 
I don't root for either runner, but there is one situation that I think would just be somewhat hilarious, okay? I think we've all accepted, I guess gravity's at screw, right? Or or speed booster is, and then you use speed booster to get like waterway or whatever. Yeah. Um, but it would be funny if gravity wasn't screw and like Audra did something like crazy wild. Like I don't even know if you could do this because I'm not a good enough player to like know all the ins and outs, but like what if what if Audra Checked Shack Tool suitless and found Speed Booster and then or Spring Ball and then used that to like get get out. That'd be crazy. Oh goodness. So my knowledge of suitless Shack Tool is very limited, and what I know of that is that you can do it without Spring Ball, but it's like way harder. Um, oh, okay. Because like, how are you getting through that Morph Tunnel without Spring Ball? You know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think Audra's about to Crystal Flash again because uh, lots of tail hits. Okay, now they're just gonna spark. That was fun. Oh, yeah. That fight went off the rails. Okay, you know what I think is sort of interesting here? Hear me out. Let's just imagine that, as bad as this is, that Breast still finds a way to eventually get there, right, and win. I actually think, like, psychologically, though, it's worse. It, I know this is gonna sound crazy. It's worse on the seat is worse on Bress because I think Audra probably quite some time ago accepted that they're probably losing the seed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Bress is like under this immense stress like the entire time, and even if he gets the win, he's gonna feel good about it. But then at the same time, it's gonna be like, can he get back in the right state of mind for Game Three? Yeah, and like you know. I very much try not to be armchair psychologist as much, but like things that could go through your mind, like, you know, I won because I played less bad, stuff like that. Like those are the kind of things you don't want to have, you know, thoughts running through your head. Um, so yeah, I, I think I agree with you. This is a no victory here is going to feel good. Um, and like, you know, it's been pretty far out of the way for Audra to be the person that takes this victory. We think it's going to be breast, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's gonna be like you know it's also like i mean and you and you know several other people have said that like the third game of the three game series is pretty exhausting and you know you've been playing for a while especially this seed tested you in a lot of ways and at this point neither of them are feeling you know particularly great about how they played it like it's gonna be a a battle of grit in this uh third game if yeah i love it. game threes a lot um mainly if they're played on the same day now i've played you know game threes separated from the other two games a few times and it's you know they're still fun but game threes where you're playing everything back to back i think they're really fun um but yes they are 100 percent exhausting and the primary reason is because like not only are, are your hands a little tired not only are you number one it's very likely both of these runners were playing a decent amount of super metroid like before these races even started today right now they got two races in now they got a third race they're gonna have to do but mainly it's just your mental capacity to make decisions continues to go down as you play you know what i mean yeah and especially if things like seed lead come into play like then things really you know go from you know bad to worse to terrible to you know get me out of this hellscape <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Dreon is now down for Andra. Um, it's so funny because, like, you know, look at, like, where we are in this seat or whatever. Like, the charge and plasma that we know are in Kratir are actually still really valuable. You know, despite having, you know, already having skipped them. Like, the ammo, just, like, you know, especially when you're running through stuff suitless and you're already kind of doing the slow stuff, like, the ammo just doesn't flow to you naturally in those kind of situations. That's a, that's a nice E-Tank refill. You know, it's the funniest thing in a way about this. I think this is kind of unique, DJ. It's kind of neat that you and I are sharing this moment. It has actually been quite some time since we've had to say anything about the gameplay that's actually impactful. Like, we're just basically sitting around waiting on them to, <laughs> you know, like, like, get to whatever it is. Like, we haven't even really been able to talk about any kind of strategy stuff in, like, 10 minutes. Yeah, I think the first time we commented together, that also happened, right? Uh, it was Beefy versus Zost, and 
they were oh, both in just I forgot weird positions. All about that one. That one was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, Zos had some issues finding power bombs early. Beefy did interesting things late that somehow allowed Zos to catch up from probably like ten minutes back. That was that was that was something. That was because if I recall correctly, ironically, Bresh just walked in the Red Tower portal. Zos forgot that was a portal. That's something what like that, that yeah. Right. So uh yeah, Bresh is finally coming back here. Chad was asking if he'd seen Mama Turtle. I think the answer to that is no. Um so he did still have a couple of outs. If this is speed booster, I think we're all gonna laugh. Hey, in all seriousness, I very rarely see anybody freeze those. I guess they're not called. Uh, what are those things called? The Nama? It's not a Nama Hey, aren't, aren't? Yeah, those? those are the ones that aren't Nama Hey's. I think. Well, whatever they are, I call them all the same thing. You don't normally see Fune? those get frozen. Is that what they're called, Funes? Oh, apparently what, they are Nama Hey. Whatever sure. they are. Um, yeah, man, we're seeing all kinds of neat stuff in this in this race. Yeah, so Crystal Flash coming up here on the right side, Bressingham. Um, I was I wanted to say something really really dumb but kind of funny, but it's not possible because we don't have space jump. But I was like, just go check, like just go through the normal way. Like, why not at this point? But we can't do that. So yeah, we've got twenty tries on this Green Gate glitch. Um, this is. I'm, I'm not going to say it can go badly because it's not going to go badly. We're just going to get this, you know, quick and easy. See? Holy like that. moly. I need to practice that. I did not know you could reload that that quickly. Nice job, Bress. My, every, every one of my attempts takes like a second or two. <laughs> oh, yeah. here it is. <laughs> As expected. We've got a gravity suit. If um, the situation arises where Audra does get to see that various suit um, before this race is over, I am very curious because, like you know, from their perspective, like gravity would be so much better, right? Because you already did everything you that very locks, right? <laughs> that isn't the screw attack that we've known for a while has the answer. But yeah, um, that could be an interesting moment here on the restream with the face cams. I want to say they're out of locations for, you know, progression um, that aren't in criteria, you know, obviously the speed booster ad that we've been somewhat talking about does still exist from their perspective, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a croc area that uh, you have to find if you don't suitless check screw attack, which <laughs> is a, is a thing you don't see um, often. I will say. So all Bress has to do is go into East Meridia, kill Kraid, and then go to Turian. Um, East Meridia is either Kraid Mouth or Redfish. Um, and they're about, he's about to be in Red Tower, so you get there somehow. Follow the lines on your map. It's an exercise for all of you out there at home. Does anybody out there know if Bress has any pets? I didn't know if Bress had like a famous dog or something like that on the stream. Uh, well, the reason, I was bringing it, the reason I was bringing it up is because if I if I was in, in Bress's situation after a seed like this, but I still won and we were going to a game three, I would spend like five to ten minutes in between the next race like playing with my dog to reset my mental state. That would be a that would be a pretty good idea, yeah. This is a this has been a, a doozy. And yeah. People are wondering where speed could be. The answers are what? Crate closet, um behind crate, plasma, shack tool. We've already we've already seen a sand pit <laughs> a long time ago as it uh as it were in this seed. That was uh, kind of the beginning of the shambles for our, our runner on the right. Yeah, it looks like uh, no other option has presented itself other than, you know, what's been hanging out here in Criteria. Um, and uh, something that was, uh, you know, a little bit of a topic yesterday that uh, you were doing, you know, not necessarily always going down the, uh, the meme route portal. Uh, this is one of those seeds where you know if you make some like 
ungodly play at the beginning of this at the beginning of this seed. You've got uh you've got a lot of advantages if you, you know, skip meme route or decide against it and also do a croc on somewhat low ammo. But uh yeah. Yeah, there's always, you know, multiple ways to solve the puzzle. But uh both runners and shambles forcing us to have to ramble. This has been quite the seed. You know, I think of all the people that could be in the booth with me, I think you're probably the most fun to ramble with. We have a lot of, uh, our discussions can go off the rails in, uh, in fun ways, so glad to be here with you. Hey, I mean, look, we all like to compete, but ultimately we're all here to have fun, right? And just have a good time, enjoy each other's company. So yeah, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta enjoy it while you can. Yeah, and I still think that the bombs are making 100 not check BT now. Like, that's at least the second time they've run past the check without doing it. Um, the charging hey, that has been collected. Time it. save could be important. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to you don't want get plasma beam or, uh, you know, whatever it may be there. But uh, we'll see if they're still making that decision or, uh, you know, if they uh, fight the... Uh... There's, there's a phrase that I want to say but nothing's coming to my mind. Somehow it starts with bite. I'll, I'll get back to everyone on that one. I don't think I, I don't think Bress is going to miss the quick kill, but I think the chances of him missing the quick kill are higher right now than they would normally be. Yeah, I mean, he did the... He did the minute of hope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yeah, he backed it up. We are checking this. I mean, at this point, like, I get oh, it. Of course. <laughs> of course. Oh, my God. That is, I just realized how crazy that is. That is because he would have been able to get out. Oh, my goodness. That's that's what that we're is for your terrible. <laughs> it's so silly. I mean, if you make that play, like, you know, I don't think if you like if you lose to that play, I think you tip your cap and you move on in life. Like, but wow i'm gonna be honest with you dj i was so locked in on just like the logic that i forgot that that was even a possibility like the fact that spring ball or or speed could have been there yeah that's crazy oh my goodness now i just kind of want to see audra go for that just for the you know kicks and giggles like it's, it's not gonna affect anything it probably wouldn't even get to that point in the race like breast is so close to done but like i don't know let's see it for you know for the fans somebody needs to make a what do you call the the gifs or the uh the um emotes that like have animation on them or whatever the animated yeah, gif emotes somebody needs to make one of Bress's reaction to that because that was one of the most epic reactions in super metroid history yeah and it and honestly it kind of looked like when Bress was here earlier that he was thinking about taking that risk um the tracker was being a little bit unfriendly because I was like, I, it looked like he might not have known with the boss here, but he did that. He definitely already had all the boss information, so that was why he didn't. But it looked like he was, uh, he was posturing, and you know, like I said, when you're in this seat and you've made the decisions you've made and things have gone as they've gone, that's uh, that maybe it's a thing that enters your mind, and you know, like you, it didn't enter my mind at all. This reminds me a lot, like, I know that I, a lot of situations remind me of matches I've been in that, you know, uh, obviously other people are not going to remember nearly as vividly as me, but, like, this reminds me a lot of Game 2 of the finals of the multi against Audra. Um, it was a Chozo seed, and I made a choice to skip. I didn't have gravity. It was the only item I was missing. I made a choice to skip Croc, and it turned out that it was at the Croc item, and so... When I did, I full cleared wreck ship, never found it, and then kind of got forced into like basically just doing suitless Meridia. And for literally 10 minutes straight, I was like, I just lost the, the match, right? Like this. And I was already down 0 1. Yeah. Well, it turns out that Audra had not only done something similar, but like didn't even have, gra didn't even have Varia to begin with. Like they had made some like wild play at the beginning. So I was like still 10 minutes ahead. So I spent like 15 straight minutes believing that it was over, right? And just waiting on the time. Yeah, but then once I got into like Torian and they still hadn't finished, I was like, "Wait a minute, maybe I." Do you get what I'm saying? Like your confidence yeah. starts to slowly build because it's like, "Wait, something bad must have really happened to them too," because they should have been done like a long time ago. So Breast might yeah. start to pick up a little bit of hope here. Yeah, and also you know, it's a it's kind of a 
uh, somewhat of a joke, but like, you know, you get the speed booster and you have to go faster. So it's like, well, I'm going fast now, you know, might as well like play, play fast, play hard as we get, we get a high five in this seat somehow. That was not on my bingo card. <laughs> and the uh, fourth potentially opportunity for this, uh, this play to BT, I don't think it's happening. Like, I'm just going to say it right now. Yeah, it's, it doesn't exist in the, in their mind. I, uh, I'm a person with a lot of words to say, you know, I think, I think I've commentated like four of the previous five races that we've had in this tournament, but, uh, you know, not necessarily one to like, you know, try to exert my influence over people too often, but like, people have opinions about things that I think are like, they're way too like in game in a way, like, you know, like people are trying to save three seconds like they're trying to you know take the 80 percent world record AJ, do me a in thing. a random race can you can you that? please can you please stop making that point just stop talking <laughs> i don't want you to help anybody just stop talking all right always get bomb bt when you have bombs it's a terrible check never do it they are somehow going straight to gravity though not that they had other plays that weren't you know behind them but yeah the, the the time from barrier to gravity award definitely goes to audra in this seed and you know moral victories that's what we're all about here right yeah this is this has been quite a doozy yeah um we had some uh some discussion after uh your game three earlier in this tournament with Sloters about you know fastest loss i think this is going to be Sloters victory <laughs> Oh, I hadn't this even thought about a, that. Yeah, maybe so. Maybe a, a one, a one ish I guess. Fourth slowest. Wow. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, how about this? Sometimes it's context. I'm gonna say that. I'm not gonna guarantee it, but I'm gonna say that it is pretty. It is likely that this ends up being the slowest victory. Once it got trimmed down to like 16 or 12 players or whatever. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. once you get deeper and deeper into the tournament, you are less likely to, to have potential like really slow times on the seeds. So, uh, yeah. this I think this is probably going to be a candidate for the slowest victory from this point forward, if that makes sense. Yeah, Bressingham showed off the, uh, the second Zeb skip. Uh, didn't want a menu off screw attack, so you... Uh... If you don't do the down back zap skip, you can uh, do some funky things there in the second one. And uh, I think Audra wants power bombs. Otherwise, I'm not sure why you'd go in that door. Or maybe just thinking. Um, again, like like you said quite a bit ago, probably has accepted defeat long ago and is shocked that you know a dot done hasn't been secured. But uh, it's coming uh, pretty quickly here. It's You know what would be the absolute complete and total shambles would be if Bress trying to literally save every second after a disastrous seed goes for stand up, something goes wrong. Yeah, well, you know, one, you said it, not me. Number two, confirming that this is the fourth slowest victory kind of spoiled the things that you know times hey, have already been secured i used to make this literally back in 2017 like i get it i'm the same way i'm not trying to curse first of all i don't believe that we have any impact on something that happened 10 minutes ago right but yeah the, the flip side here is um it's so funny because everybody's always trying to save every second i, I do the same thing right but actually going for stand-up might be in some context literally the only way that you could lose but you don't know you get what i'm saying yeah and uh for fans of the the hundo tournament that's going on right now there was a recent discovery involving manipulating this even better than we previously used to do um but according to chat without spring ball that wasn't possible on resting camp side um i definitely don't know what's going on or how to explain it and uh my retired co-commentator, I assume, also isn't super knowledgeable. <laughs> but maybe you've been seeing the talk about that. It's pretty, pretty cool. Still oh, finding say stuff. Say that again. I, I don't think I understood. The, uh, there's a new stand-up manipulation in. Uh, for, oh, I did I see mean, that. Yeah. 
I mean, I was going to say Hundo, but I assume any category you can do stand up in, it, it applies. Maybe if you need Spring Ball, that disallows RBO, but not GT Classic, for example. Yeah, I haven't gotten around to, to messing with it yet. But it looks really cool. It's, it's always neat that everybody's finding new stuff. Yeah, the, apparently, like, the the first race in that tournament that happened since the trick was discovered, Zinni pulled it off in the race. That was pretty hype. I'm going to, speaking of new tech, or slightly new tech, technically, I knew this one already existed, but it recently got reposted. But I got to hit my boy up, Ossie, this week, because I really want to learn that spring ball tech you were talking about. I think you talked about it in the last race, didn't you? Yeah, to, um, to you know, subvert the underwater wall jump and still go that yeah, way. Yeah, that is some sick tech, man. I want to learn how to do that. He's got a he's got a deep bag of tricks over there. Yeah, yeah, to say the least. So yeah, we're in the escape, as Kip said. Our uh, our wars have been a little insignificant for a little while, but you know there is gameplay going on on the screen. Our tracker maybe could have you know, given us the lead runner's audio, but uh, we're almost done with this one. Bryce is going to secure this one, and uh, you know that pivotal nerve-inducing, you know. Fatigue breaking game three is gonna it's gonna be on our airways relatively quickly. It doesn't look like Audra looked at speed booster given the uh, the chat's desire to see the reaction. Uh, yeah, I think uh, yeah, probably like we said, both of them were feeling bad. And Brest, from Brest's perspective, it was kind of a why not. From Audra's perspective, it's like you're right. Like you maybe you're starting to feel that you somehow still maybe have a chance given, you know, it's been 80 minutes. Well, get your GG's in the chat for our winner of this race number two of best of three series, Bressingham. With a, I don't know what the final time is. You can read it from race time, but uh, quite the race. Yes, one hour, 20 minutes, 30 seconds for Bressingham, a finish. Um... Somewhat spoilers, I guess, but we are actually going to get a finish on the other side. Um, a little atypical, I'm going to say. No, that's pretty typical. Audra does that all the time. Yeah, I, I, I think the rules of the tournament are such that you're supposed to forfeit here, but the tournament organizer is tracking, so he can't speak to you right now. He's completely incapable of muting his mic and telling you the rules. <laughs> well, I'm not an organizer, so guess who doesn't have to worry about it? <laughs> So yeah, we are, uh, that literally, so it literally just happened in real time. So we've got quite a bit more action, but that's also going to give us, I mean, I don't know. We've been on break for a little bit, right? We, we still got some, uh, some break time here before we have to get back into things mattering mode on, uh, on a game three that is going to happen. That's for certain. Luckily, since this is like it's kind of hard to explain, some people might not actually know the uh, the history around how that rule literally kind of first got implemented. The first time I believe it ever got implemented was during a tournament that I was the organizer of. It was the 2021 SG Live online tournament, and we had to implement the rule. It, it was this, these exact same settings, which sometimes lead to situations like this where somebody finishes and somebody else is like very far away. But the reason that we needed to implement it was because the best of threes were, um, they can be very, very long, right? But at the same yeah. time, that the window for completing those tournaments was like a week. So we were basically like, people were having to play like sometimes potentially back to back or like literally two days apart or whatever. And so we were just like, look, if you're not at Mother Brain 2, just quit you know and like let's move this thing along because also too uh there, there wasn't as much space to get restreams because there were just so many other tournaments happening so anyway yeah. that was the reason we implemented that back then uh, i still think it was the right decision but you know it's not something that you have to do or have to enforce necessarily yeah um i think that uh this was also you know there are several tournaments going on right now i think Probably the schedule, especially because, you know, we're later in our tournament, we don't have as many matches, but, you know, a little bit more space on the calendar, potentially, and also, I don't, I don't know if we've added channels since then, but, um, you know, it seems like a lot more stuff is airing on Speed Gaming now, so, you know, we're a little bit more like, you know, turn the channels out, get everything that we can in, you know, more content for all the fans, which is, you know, always good to see. 
course, space jump was a create closet. Like in this seed, why not? Right? <laughs> Spring ball at plasma. Not far from home. <laughs> you know, pressing him and Chad. Uh, probably relieved by the uh, you know additional time at the end for uh, this uh, this game three. Fresco, pet the dog or the cat if you have a pet. Have a little fun. Get yourself in the right mindset. Fresco has a cat. Oh, the cat. The cat could definitely be comforting. Those uh, you know, you put your your head right next to the stomach. You hear the purrs real low. That's good. Yeah, I don't have a cat. I had one growing up, but I did read recently that there's like, or maybe uh, maybe this is common knowledge. I don't know, but I read recently that the, you know, like the purring sound that the cat makes is like partially, I think, to like soothe themselves, and so by extension, like humans find it very soothing too. Yeah, and uh, seven more power bombs this seed compared to the last one. Um, thank you, thank you, game, for for ten power bombs. That is a normal amount. Um, I didn't get a look at where Spacer was, but that's the thing we don't care about. Um, but yeah, we are, a we got a baby skip here. No speed. Nicely done. I think Spacer was a spring ball. Spring was a plasma. I called out Spacer from Yahoo knows, but, um, whew, yeah, both of our runners have, uh, <laughs> discussed needing a little bit of a break and a reset, so... We're gonna be on your airways for uh for you know lots of time tonight. I think uh I've had several, you know, long commentary blocks, but this is uh this one might uh this one might take the record for, you know longest time. This uh this second seed was quite long and uh the first seed wasn't necessarily short and who knows, like at this point, like, you know, I'm ready for you versus Slaughter's game two level of nonsense to come up our way. Oh, yeah. You know, it's funny. I actually thought game one was the wilder seed. Game two, if you, like, knew what to do, was actually not that bad. It just kind of was slow at the beginning. Unfortunately for uh, for me, it took me longer than uh, than it should have to figure out what to do. So, yeah, I, mean, I played that one worse than the seed was, actually. Yeah, and, you know, somewhat similar for this one, like, you know, we called out, like, you skip through attack and, like, it probably took rest 10, 15 minutes to get back to it. And, like, you know, it was just kind of there for you for the taking. And even if, you know, you get to there when you get to it there and, like we said, like, you feel reasonable about everything you've done so far, like, skipping screw just put things, like, so much further away from you than they, than they really needed to be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, um... That's that second seed was like the perfect combination of sort of like really bad options. Like like that as far as like just the 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 first like ten minutes or so was probably like the worst widest range of bad options I think I've ever seen in like a seed person because it was like yeah. like the high jump boots, but then it fed you into wreck ship and like you could go to the back of it technically logically, but then you get back there and it's a dead end. Like it was awful. It was really bad. Yeah. I'm very much looking forward to C3 being so crazy that even once we get to the interviews, we can't ask anything about either of the previous two games, and we're just gonna, you know, we're just gonna be in there, and we're gonna we're gonna sing Kumbaya, we're gonna virtually hold hands, and we're gonna, you know, seance this uh this bad juju out of the tournament and get back to you know. Regularly scheduled Super Metroid randomizer action. Speaking of which, why don't we take a look at the bracket while we're sitting here on air for a minute, DJ? What do we got? What do we got coming up in terms of matchups here? Yeah. So in the winner side, one winner semis has already happened. Uh, Slaughter's beat Derp and is uh, currently sitting in winners finals. Derp is on this side of the bracket. Uh, as far as on this side. Winner of this match uh, will face MM2 Ness Cartridge in the Losers Top 8. On the other side of Losers Top 8 is Kip versus Nevdi. And then Real Cutie versus Zeb has been scheduled. It's this Saturday. I believe it starts at like 9 p.m., something like that. Um, Fun fact, I'm the only person to take a game off of Slaughter so far. Yeah, Slaughter's has lost one game. Uh, I still lost, but, you know. 
a real cutie has been uh shouting from the mountaintops for anyone to hear that he still hasn't lost and uh you know the people who think that he's uh you know, maybe the underdog or you know not gonna win this upcoming race he's uh he doesn't believe the haters so uh cutie you shouldn't yeah. be bragging so much about being undefeated in that extremely soft side of the bracket by the way i'm just kidding i'm not being serious well you know if uh depending on which way this goes there's either going to be zero or one people from that side of the bracket in the loser side of top eight so uh you're not you might be out of pocket but you're not wrong <laughs> no nah, i'm just playing around I, like the, 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 you know what the funny thing is is like you really for real do kind of have to like shift gears a little bit match to match in this because there's like a central you know way of playing that you want to like play well but like honestly every single person if you like study them enough has legitimate strengths and like quote unquote potential shortcomings and so like being aware of all of it is like it can really uh it can really come up in a few of your decisions along the way so it's 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 hard to uh continue to remain undefeated in these types of uh tournaments that is true um and i promise you it actually I, you know you can say what you want whether you think i'm being like if i'm just bsing here but like it actually can tangibly show up in some of the decisions that you make in a game um it's not the same as like traditional speed running where you're just kind of like you're just trying to go fast as, a, as an in general there's a few strategic things you can do versus some opponents there but like in rando you really got to be like if you want to be at the very top of it you really got to be aware of like how people play and how people think that is true and uh we'll see uh you know if both of our runners hopefully can you know get that mental reset in as far as you know what's transpired for the last 90 minutes of uh of gameplay and uh you know if they do you know things similarly things differently what have you but yeah that is a second place finish from audro Official race time one hour thirty minutes forty seven seconds, you know, and uh, yeah, we'll have GG, to see what, what transpires in game three. Which How will, much time uh, do you think we have in between? Uh, so they are about they should be starting relatively soon, real time. So we got about ten minutes. So I think I'm gonna do what I suggested to Breast do. I think I'm gonna go pet my dog for a few minutes and reset myself so we can have a nice open up chat and redeem game a treat for Sam. That's right. Yeah, I know that we don't have that reward here in this channel, but uh, I'll just assume somebody donated some uh, some channel points, and I'll go give Sam a treat. But anyway, uh, give us a little outro there, DJ. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be the end of game two. We tied at one one. We have uh, an exciting game three coming at you, and uh, yeah, we'll see you in about ten minutes.